Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to another rare plant haul. I say another rare plant haul and honestly, I was thinking about it this morning and I don't feel like I've done one in ages. And then I started realizing I haven't really been buying anything new this year. I don't know if that's the same for anybody else, but it's certainly as far as I go, I haven't really got anything new that I haven't already shown you before or that I haven't already bought into the shop before. A lot of it has been, I would say, repeat orders and stuff like that. I haven't really got anything for myself. I think there's one plant upstairs that I haven't got with me right now and I'm just not going to mention it. I think it's a type of epipremnum that I bought in for myself. I think generally now it takes a lot for me to get a plant because I work with them all day and I'm not really even surfing the internet looking for them. But I have got a couple of really special things today, and I mean really special. I am beyond excited about some of these plants. Now then, I'm looking down at them now. I think uh, at least two of them I've had for some time. These, these aren't that new. They're new for you guys and new for me showing you, but I've had them quite a while, I would say. Certainly the first plant, I'll start with it anyway. The first plant I'm going to show you. I've had this, my goodness, maybe since late last year. It might even be one of the plants that I unboxed on the documentary when I brought in that big load from London. I think it might have been then. So I've had this a long time. But yeah, there's some new things. One of them was a lucky find in a trade shop. One of them was something that popped up online that I was not expecting to find. And it's absolutely iconic. I can't wait. One of them is something that I did see, I think not even last year, maybe even the year before that, I saw this and I really, really wanted this. This has been on order for like a year. I got that in. Hopefully that won't die. I've just got a lot of stuff and I'm not going to waste any more of your time. So let's just get started with the first plant. And this one is one that I've had for some time, 100%. The first plant I'd like to show you, I'm not sure I know what name it is. I think I asked Ben this morning to find me out the name because I think when it was ordered, it might have just been ordered as like a black stem variegated alocasia. Give me one moment. Yeah, black stem, alocasia variegata. That's all Ben has for me as well. So that's what I'm going to call it. It's very, very beautiful. Though. And the reason I wanted it, obviously, yes, it's variegated. Awesome. But also you get on the back of it. Seriously, guys, this is just, this is so special. You get, of course, black stems. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful plant. Look at that. I'll try and show it to you in a way that is nice. Obviously, it's not the easiest. There you go. There's a really, really beautiful example. And on the front as well. That's what it looks like. It's such a beautiful plant. Now, I have had this for ages. I don't think I can actually pull this out of the pot to check on it, but I imagine it's probably rooted in quite a bit. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. No, there's nothing coming out of the bottom. I honestly expected to see some root. So I've had this, as I've said before, I've had it a long time. It hasn't always been in this pot. This is quite new, I think, as of maybe a couple of months ago. It just kept rotting back to the comb all the time. I struggle with alocasia a lot, especially to import them as well. I can't be the only person finding that. If you buy an alocasia and it gets sent to you like bare root or in moss or whatever, you're going to lose the foliage probably and you're going to have to grow back. So that's honestly what I've been doing with this one. This is where some of the old foliage has been and it's growing out a new variegated leaf. Can you see this? You may be able to see it. You may not be able to see it. I will try and Show it to you the best I can. Yeah, you can see the variegation on that. And it's going okay. And I've said this so many times, variegated alocasia are not the best because honestly, they revert uncontrollably so. So far, this one has not been too bad. It's been reasonably stable. But I don't want to speak too soon because at any minute this thing could turn green. So I don't really advocate getting them. I know I've said this a lot, guys. I've said this before in videos. I don't really advocate getting these. I just don't. I think if you want to spend some money on variegation, allocations are not generally a good bet. Like if you get lucky at a garden center and you see, you know, something variegated and you it's a bit of a score, then go for it. Get it, obviously. But I think if you're wanting to drop a lot of money on them, I, I don't know. I, I don't advocate them. That's just my personal opinion, of course. You do you, you do what you want to do. I've said this before. I've just struggled with so many very good allocations. This one, not so much. This one's been on the better side. I've bought so many other very good allocations. I can't even tell you, and they've all reverted. I still have one of them upstairs. I think I bought a alocasia silver dragon that had variegation on it. I've never seen that variegation since, and I've been growing it out for a year and it's gone. So be very careful when you get variegated alocasia. If it's a score in a garden center, absolutely buy it, of course, but just keep an open mind, I think, when you get them. But yeah, I went for these because I don't often see this black stemness on plants, and I thought it was sexy. I thought it was hot. I got a little bit bored of the Zabrina variegata. I do have one. I actually have a pup 
uh, I think it's over there growing and it has white variegation on, which is very interesting, by the way, because the mother had yellow variegation. So that's interesting. So I have a white variegated pop in a pot over there. But yeah, I love this plant. Don't get me wrong. It's not it's not growing the best. It's it's a little bit leggy, admittedly. I've had it in the studio. It crisped up a little bit. So now it lives down here. It's beautiful. I can't really tell you too much about it. If you know in the comments, please enlighten me. I would love to know. But I'm calling it Alocasia Black Stem Variegata because it is absolutely beautiful. Very, very beautiful plant. Love this one. Right. Are we doing this in any order? Probably not. I will definitely keep the best ones for last though, because honestly, they are awesome. I'll see what you think about it. You might look and go, don't get it. But seriously, I love them. So I was sold this one a while ago. Now, forgive me. I can't remember how long ago it was. It might be about a month ago. I don't know if I've got that right. I've had it a while. I'd like to think I've had it for a month. Does it have a date on here or anything? No. So this plant has an ID on it and I'm not saying the seller hasn't ID'd it right. It's just, I don't remember them looking like this, but I'm going to accept this as the ID for now. This here is a really beautiful, I think it's a variegated Anthurium Renaissance. Now, the only reason I thought it might not be a Renaissance is because I think the pictures I've seen of Anthurium Renaissance, the leaves are very long, they're very curly, they stand up um, kind of on end. It's, it's very bougie. I've covered it in a rare plant index on Anthurium, but this one's not really behaving like that. Now, obviously it's young, so it, it probably will, but either way, it doesn't even matter. I'm calling it that for the sake of the ID and what we know it to be. But what I really just want to show you is what it looks like, because it is very beautiful. Can you see here? I'm going to try and cover it over with my really bad fake tanned hands. But if I can just show you up close, you might be able to get a good sense of what it's like. Really, really pretty variegation on it. I don't know how easy it is to see if I hold it back. Can you see it? Yeah, I think if I pull the leaf down there, you can see where the green is. The issue is there's so much variegation on it. It's hard to see the green. <laughs> I think that's the problem. It's very like um, Philodendron Jose Bono type variegation, kind of. It's like, I can't really describe it. It just reminds me a lot of that kind of variegation. Now, normally when I see variegated Anthurium, I don't like them. Like I see a lot out um, just, you know, coasting on Facebook and stuff like that. And I think a lot of them have this really nasty kind of like acid bleach smear kind of variegation on it. And I'm not here for it. So when I found out about this one, I was like, yes, this is quite pretty. I will have one and I want to see how it does because I've never had this type of anthurium before. I think a lot of people might look at that and not even realize it was an anthurium, I think. Let me try and turn it towards the camera without actually tipping everything everywhere. That's probably the best I can do. I am sorry, that is probably the best I can do. But it's such a beautiful plant. If I hide my face, then it should hopefully focus on something. But yeah, very, very gorgeous plant. Now, it hasn't really changed since I brought it in. I can tell you that much, because as I say, I've had this around about a month. I've had this in, no real change. It is actually growing a new leaf in the middle. Can you see it if I wiggle my fingertip there? That's a new leaf in the middle. And it's got some really beautiful roots coming in as well. I think if I tip that and hold it up there, you can see there is a tag in here, by the way. It just says Anthurium Renaissance. That date means nothing. This is an old pot. <laughs> I haven't had it since August because that would be August last year and that's ages away. Yeah, I don't know much about it. I can't really tell you what it likes and what it doesn't like because I, I only have the one and it, it was very much a personal plant. So I'll let you know how it goes because it is very stunning. Um, I think its newest leaf is this one. I want to say it's this one here. So we'll see how it progresses because this one just has a little slither of green on and then the rest of it is very minty. I'll describe it as minty, which mm, I have a weird relationship with mint, as you guys know. But we'll see how this one turns out. I'm very, very intrigued. But we'll pop him down. Right, next plant, next plant, next plant, next plant. I feel like I'm missing a plant here. I bet you, I bet you any money that once I finish this video, I'll realize that I've missed showing you a plant because I can't help but feel I had more plants to show you. Never mind, they'll make the next haul, right? So the next plant, uh, I have a couple of these. Don't have many, but I have a couple. And this is very, very recently brought in. So it's not looking unbelievable. It really isn't. Um, it's still in the acclimation stage. But this next plant, I didn't realize they were as rare as what they are. I had no idea. I really did not know this. I thought they were more common than what they were. Um, I've had very little exposure to this plant, but I'm very pleased to bring it in and start work on effectively just propagating them and just seeing how they do, right? Seeing what their care is like. So the next plant I have to show you is a little bit bashed up. It's, it's acclimating. But the next plant I have to show you is 
Anthurium Selby Silver, which I think is a sport of Anthurium Crystallinum. Now then, I put a photograph on my Instagram at some point last year. You may or may not have seen that. And I said, here's a weird Anthurium. I don't know what it is. And a lot of you were like, oh, it's Selby Silver. It looks like Selby Silver. And you're right. It looked a lot like Selby Silver. And I was convinced. As soon as I Googled Selby Silver, I was like, yep, yeah, absolutely. You guys have hit the nail on the head. That is correct. What happened with that plant was I stuck a tag in it so I knew what it was. And I came back to it three, maybe four months later, and it had grown some more, and it was just a regular crystallinum. So while it looked like that, I think we just got lucky with the, the way the leaves were presenting at that period in time due to the environment, basically. So it was not a Selby Silver. This one here is, and I believe this particular Selby Silver has been traced back to the International Arid Show, so it is the real deal. I know there are a few on the market that are not the real deal. I can confirm that this one is the real deal because we checked, but this is kind of what it looks like. I know that was a very long-winded explanation, but that's what it looks like. It's very slim. It would appear, because it's my first time getting the plant, um, it would appear that they do grow very slim. So the hallmark characteristics are that they're a lot slimmer and a lot more blushed. This is an older leaf here that's had a little bit of a beating. I'll show you that. They are a lot more blushed, sorry, cover my face, than a typical crystallinum. They're a lot slimmer, a lot pointier. That is probably the best example. Now, I know these can go very dark as well, both when the leaves emerge and when they, they finish off, they finish off, they harden off, they're very, very dark. These ones are paler. You can probably tell why they're paler because it's acclimating. Like this leaf here is going to go. I can already see it's going to go here. You can see the yellow. Uh, this one here is similar. Sorry, I'm dripping all over my table. Um, this one here is similar. It's a little bit yellowy, but this one here is a good hallmark of what it will probably end up being like, like that. When it does grow a little bit bigger, I'll keep you guys updated on Instagram. This is another plant that I can't tell you too much about because it is a first and that's, that is a running theme for a lot of these plants. They truly are new for me. I'm very excited about them. But this here is Anthurium Selby Silver. I'll give you one more look before I put it down. It's gorgeous. Obviously, it's not looking its absolute performative best, but it is a very, very beautiful little Anthurium and very unique. I don't own anything that's quite like this, so it's absolutely beautiful to look at. One more shot close up of that leaf there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little thing. Honestly, absolutely stunning. I think soon it'll get potted up. I think it's about ready to, uh, to go. Oh, it's so cute. Right, so this next plant I have to show you is, it's just a lucky find, really. I know a few of you guys go out into like garden centers, box stores, and occasionally you find a variegated something or other, whether it's an alocasia, on occasion it's been a calathea, I think that's happened before, Monstera is a good one. There's a few different plants I think that you can get lucky with and find variegates if you're eagle-eyed, pro tip by the way, um, but I found one in a hardware store. So in England, we have what is known as B&Q. I believe, I'm not certain of this, it's basically the same as a Laos uh, or a Home Depot. No, is it the same as Home Depot? I'm not sure anymore. I thought I had this worked out. I thought it was the same as Laos. I don't know. It's a hardware store anyway that does, you know, hardware, um, sells kitchens, bathrooms, stuff like that. It's got gardening, all the rest. And as always, these stores have really nice looking, miserable plant sections. And in this miserable plant section, I found a gem. So I will show you what it is. This right here is a, I will show you a close up. It's a variegated strelitzia. Now then, you're probably thinking, Kaylee, you've already got one of those. And I do, I actually have two. I have a large one that is not doing so well. It really needs a water and I have a much smaller one in my studio. But the thing is, the studio one and the other one that's actually over here off camera, that is Strelitzia Nicolai, I believe. This here is Strelitzia Reginae, and that is harder to get. You don't really see them. So I will show you where the variegation is. There is two in this pot. You could probably tell, I mean, this is literally left as it was. It was 10 pounds. It's left in the pot. I haven't had a chance to do anything with it. But if I show you this one here, if I just, just ignore this plant here at the bottom, this one is totally normal. I know it's got some weird, weird shit going on there, but there's, there's nothing on this one I have checked. However, its sister in the pot does have variegation and it has variegation on every single leaf. I don't know if you can tell, this will be difficult, but there's some variegation on that leaf there. If I work my way up the plant, there is some more on there. That's not so much granted. There's definitely more on this side, I think. There is some variegation there. And where's the next leaf? 
there is some variegation there as well and it is popping out a new leaf it looks very stressed i have to say so i don't know what that new leaf is going to look like but i can see you'll never get it on camera of course i can see some very small um you know like pinstripes of variegation going up it so fingers crossed it's going to be beautiful and as i say it is a different form of Strelitzia to the one that generally knocks around. People tend not to pick these ones as much. I think these Strelitzia here, their leaves are generally much smaller, if you're wanting to know the difference. The Nikolai is a lot more paddly, and I think it's the, the Bird of Paradise plant that a lot of people go for. This one is not. Now, I'm not too sure on the flowers or anything like that. I can't remember. If Ben was here, he'd be able to tell me what color the flowers were. But it's likely to be a different color. Maybe it's white. I actually don't know. Or is this, the, is this the orange one? Maybe the one upstairs is white. I don't know, okay? You can get white flowers, and I think you can get the orange flowers, and the orange ones are the really beautiful ones. Um, but yeah, this is a different type of Strelitzia to the other one. And as I say, as you can clearly tell, I'm not hiding anything. It was a really lucky find. So when you're in Ikea, when you're in box stores, have a little look. You might not even be shopping for one. But have a little look because they are there and they are there because these plants are a product of TC, which means that they're produced by the hundreds of thousands and it will be a natural mutation. Now, a lot of the time growers will pick these out and hold them back, obviously, because they have a value attached to them. But every so often, and I'm sure a lot of us have seen it happen because people talk about this sort of stuff on Facebook, you, some do slip through the net. And this is a classic example of when it has. This is very beautiful. It's very small. Don't get me wrong. It's very small. I will probably repot it at some point, maybe get it upstairs into the studio where it's got loads of light and then grow it out and see what happens. So this here is Strelitzia reginae variegata, not Nikolai, slightly different plant. Now then, the next plant I'm going to show you, it's, it's not potted yet, it's still acclimating, so I've, I've basically taken it out of its packaging, put it in water for a couple of days just to, to get it going. So if I'm about to hold up a plant that's essentially a stump, but seriously, I saw this plant on Instagram some point, like way over a year ago. It should have been on a wish list. I don't know why I didn't make the wish list. Honestly, I don't. I think I forgot about it. I even forgot that I ordered it, right? And I ordered it early, I think it was early 2020. It was before COVID hit. I put an order in, it was, it's basically been on hold this whole time. It was an order as part of like other things. Honestly, I saw this and right. So let me slow down. Let me explain what I'm talking about. I have a thing about blue shit, right? Everyone that knows me knows that I love blue shit. Blue shit is hard to find. The only thing I've found that's reasonably blue, I've actually got it here. I've just filmed a different video. This here is Epipremnum panatum CB blue. It's pretty blue, right? It's cool. And in fact, this might come in handy in a minute. I can compare it. Never thought about that. But I love my blue shit. Now I've tried different blue shit, different, different blue shit over the past two years. And as a few of you will know quite notably, I get let down a lot because you get pulled in by the Instagram pictures of all these nice blue things and they look all sexy. I'm looking at you, Begonia. And uh, it turns out they're not. It's a certain light, e.g. it's a camera flash. It's got to be in a certain light, it's a certain angle, yada, yada, yada. It's not blue, right? I can't be the only person that's been there. And I've been there and it hurts. I'm trying to come back from that. But I saw a fern. Not a blue star fern, before you start, not a blue star fern. I saw a fern, I think, on Instagram. I don't know whose Instagram it was, some randoms Instagram. And seriously, I saw this thing and I was stopped in my tracks and that does not happen often with me. And I'm not trying to be, um, not snobby, but I'm quite worn in in terms of seeing plants that I like. I do with plants every day. I get shown pictures of plants every day. Like, do you want this? Do you not want this? What do you think of this? Have you seen this before? Anything, right? Every, I mean, everyone is now, but me specifically, I'm very hardened to it. So it takes a lot for me to see a new plant and be like, holy shit, I really need that. And last year, this happened. And honestly, I immediately set out to figure out where the hell I could get this plant from. I only have this one. I would love to get some more. I really would, because I think you're going to love this. Seriously, I think you're going to love this. The next plant I have to show you is... I don't know if I've got the name right because I should have looked it up before the video and I haven't. I'm very sorry. This is my sheer ignorance coming off. But the next plant I believe I have to show you is the Microsorum thailandicum. Is that it? Microsorum thailandicum. It is basically a blue fern. But guys, it's, it's fucking blue. It's actually 
blue, right? Seriously, get a load of this fern. You're gonna shit yourself. Stop what you're doing. I don't care what you're doing. Get off your phone, put the dog down. Seriously, look at this. Tell me that's not amazing. Tell me that's not amazing. I showed this to Ben yesterday and he didn't care. And I don't understand why no one cares about this fern. Let me know what you think down below. If you want something blue, this is, this is your boy, honestly. Now I must say, I didn't know about this when I saw it on Instagram. Obviously there's the roots, by the way. I didn't know about this when I saw it on Instagram, but it's rock solid. Like, can you tell it's, it's, what's it like? It's harder than an orchid leaf because orchid leaves can be quite firm, just, you know, like a regular paddly orchid. I can't think of one specifically right now. I'm not into my orchids, but they have quite thick leaves. This is way stronger. I can't think of anything that's as strong. Maybe some higher varieties when they get mature and meaty, they're quite strong. Like I have upstairs, I have quite a thick, I think it's higher pubicalyx. Those are quite meaty. It's very much like that. It's kind of like a higher crossed with a fern, but it's fucking blue guys. It's actually blue. Can you see this on camera? There is no tricks. I'm just under the light. I'm not doing anything specific. This, this is the fern. Have you seen anything in your life? Now I want to really immortalize this because honestly, this might die here. I've never had one of these in before. I don't know how easy they are or anything like that. As I say, this, this was acclimating. It's still acclimating. Um, I don't know if it's gonna survive. If it doesn't survive, I will try very hard to find another one because I need one of these things to live. But y'all have to see this. This is just unbelievable. Tell me of a plant that is more blue than that, because I tell you what, I'll get one of those too. This is just, I mean, seriously, I'll hold it right up. No tricks. Sorry, it is focusing on, there you go. There, look at that. That's probably a thumbnail at this point, isn't it? There you go, that's a thumbnail. Right there, that is a thumbnail. That is unbelievably good. I've never seen anything quite like that, literally. This is a plant that I thought I might get disappointed. I didn't know, because you don't know, because Instagram lies to all of us about a lot of things. But I thought it might be lying to us about this. And <laughs> seriously, I didn't even really need to unpack it. I could see it in the packaging, how blue it was. And I was just floored. It is the most beautiful thing. Now, what appears to happen, I think some of this foliage here is newer and it looks green. Now, it could be a light situation doing this. I don't know. All I can tell you is that once the leaf is here, it appears to be here to stay. So it could be a light thing. It could be, you know, high light, low light. It could just be the leaf hardening off because I feel like these leaves here are less blue, these two here on my fingertips, than obviously a lot of the older ones, which are, oh my God, have you literally, have you seen this? So I don't know. I can't tell you much about it. I would love to know more about it if you know anything about these. These are something else they really are. I'd like to think and hope that it's gonna be hardy because it is literally like a hoya. Like I cannot bend this leaf. It is absolutely rigid. I don't know if you get a sense of how rigid it is. I think you can on camera, but literally have you seen anything, anything as good as that? I don't think you have. I don't think you have. This absolutely pisses on most of the blue things I've seen online. And I'm so pleased to have this. I only wish that I got more. I think I might try. So this is, I think it is, Microsorum thailandicum. I'm guessing it originates in Thailand. It's just, holy shit. It's, I don't really have anything else to say. There's, there's no need. Look at it. There's no need. Look at that. Absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. So I'm gonna go put this back in water real quick because I need it to live real bad, real, real bad. There we go, back in it goes. Please acclimate, please don't die. Oh, the state of my hair, what is the point in styling my hair? It's so hot in here, by the way, it's like 28 degrees at about 80% humidity and things are sticking to other things that shouldn't stick together and it's, it's not very nice. But we have one plant to go and it is awesome and I wish I could tell you more running theme, right? But that's what these plant holes are for, obviously. If I know something about a plant, I'll tell you. Similarly, if I don't know something about a plant, I will tell you, because what's the point in lying, right? So the last plant I have to show you, I didn't find this, okay? Ben actually found this online and he told me about it. And I said, yes, I said, yes, pull the plug. Because I, it's, it's a long story, but when I'm in the van and we're driving around a lot, 
we, we, we do stupid shit sometimes, but we've, we've often driven somewhere and found like, you know, it's so silly. This is going to sound so stupid on camera, but if we're making long drives, it's kind of like I spy when you play, when you're a kid, except we do it as adults, except it's not I spy. We do silly things like, you know, find me the best tree. Let's have a tree off. Find me the nicest tree on this journey, right? <laughs> it could be in a field. It could be in a garden. It could be whatever. And we're doing it one day. And I, I don't know anything about trees, garden, outdoor stuff. I, it's just not something I know about. And I found one and I was like, that is an unbelievable tree. It was really mature. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, those trees are awesome. Um, they're really, really pricey or whatever because they grow so slowly, I think, which is going to bring me on to a point later on. That tree was a monkey puzzle tree. I think he sent me the name of what it actually is. And I'm going to embarrass myself by trying to read it out now, I think. Give me one moment. So it is apparently, I will hold it up in a minute. And our, what is that? Araucaria araucana. Can you tell I know nothing at all? So it's up on the screen, because uh, I ain't doing that twice. I will show you it, but essentially what I have to show you is a very, very tiny, it's this big, a variegated monkey puzzle tree. I know, that is so random, I totally get that. But I tell you something, this has to be one of a kind. I think at the time, I don't know this for certain, but I think there was only two offered for sale. I think I purchased one and somebody else purchased one. I don't know how many of these there are. Ben used to deal in outdoor uh, palms and, and things like that, olive trees, stuff like that. And he, he is into it a little bit. And he's told me that he's never heard of them, but I have one here and it's this big and it's adorable. I will, of course, put on the screen what a mature tree looks like, because you may be familiar with them. They, they look a little bit like your standard, like conifer, like evergreen tree, except just a lot different. They're very, very spiky as well. It's not something you really want to grab a hold of. It's, they're not soft to the touch, but they're incredible. Here is a picture of what they look like as trees, if that helps at all. And I have here a baby variegated one. And honestly, I am so excited about it. Let me show you it right now. I know it's small. I know it's small. Now, I don't know if the variegation is going to come off on camera, but there is a lot. And I mean, there is a lot. I think on the lower leaves, you can kind of see it. I'm going to have to bring this one right up like this. Can you see here on a, is it there? Sorry, I'm doing this back to front on camera. There is a little bit of variegation there. And if I turn it right towards the camera, if I leave it long enough, you might be able to see that all of the leaves do actually have some on, even the newer ones. I will try and turn it a little bit. I don't know how easy it is to see, so I apologize if it's not very visible. I guess you're just gonna have to trust me that there's variegation all over this thing. So I did ask Ben how quickly these grow, and I was not met with excitement because apparently they grow unbelievably slow, like real slow. I'm sure he told me that it would take several years for it to get like two foot high or something like that. So I'm a little bit upset about that, but this is very, very, very special to me. And you know what? I'm going to give it a go anyway. Who cares, right? It's truly gorgeous. I don't know how old this one is, obviously. I know nothing about them. Um, I can ask Ben and I'll put it up on the screen because he's not here right now. But that is him. I know it's random, guys. I know it's random, but it's a variegated tree. <laughs> I had to expand somehow, right? It's a variegated tree and I'm really excited about it because imagine this. I mean, I might never be alive to see it, but imagine this as a full blown tree in all of its glory. That would be really something else. I think that would be so stunning. And I, I just hope I get to see some portion of it. I really do. If you know how quickly these grow, maybe you've got one. You can tell me how many feet they grow in a year or centimeters they grow in a year, which is more likely. Let me know. I think that the regular monkey puzzle, I'm going to call them monkey puzzle. The regular monkey puzzle trees are so expensive because they grow so slowly. So if you want to buy one, you're buying a mature one or a small one or whatever size that you want. I don't think they're quick. So I don't think I care. This is something so special and I will do everything I can to make sure that this stays alive. I really will. I'll show you one more time. I know it's weird for the channel. I realize that it's something totally different, but it is very, very special. Are you going to focus? There we go. It is very special and it's borderline one of a kind. I don't want to speak too soon, but that is really something else. A variegated tree. 
a variegated tree, guys. How beautiful is that? I'm going to pop him down and he will have to go and live back where he is. I think I'm going to get him in a self-watering pot. I know that sounds a bit random for a tree, but I think he might want to remain a little bit more on the moist side. And the last thing I'd want to do is dry him out when I'm not here because he's very young. So I will speak to Ben and see what the best course of action is for that because I have one and it's so precious to me. So I will let you know how that goes. Any information I find on that, I will show you. I will update you on Instagram. As with anything, if there's ever something you want to see and I haven't showed you, just pester me through whatever means necessary, whether it's a comment on here or, you know, I leave those little boxes on Instagram. Just tell me you want to see something and either in a haul or a report or a story post, I'll just show you, you know, some updates. Maybe I could do that a little bit more often, actually. We could work that into the channel. Maybe it could just be an update video, like a where are they now? And you guys give me a bunch of requests on plants you'd like to see and I show you them or I tell you about it if they've died or whatever else. Maybe we could do that. Until then, sorry, I'm very excitable today. I'm also a little bit hyper because I need to get out of here. It's too hot. But thank you very much for watching this haul. This has been a really special one for me. There is a lot of first time plants in here, a lot of stuff that I'm very excited about. So I'm so pleased to have been able to share with you today all of these awesome things. I love you very, very much. Leave a comment down below if there's anything you'd like to say. If you like this video, then please leave a like down below. It really, really helps. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, whether it be hauls, informational stuff, repot with me's, stuff on the living wall, shop tours, anything you want, I've probably got it. Please feel free to subscribe and have a little look through my channel. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for your time. I'm going to go now and air out. I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.